So I'm standing by a large and quite mature plant of Vitis coinitiae, which is a quick growing vine and it's a beautiful ornamental vine which you see growing up walls or up trees or over pergolas. And the great attraction of it is its wonderful autumn colours, the yellows and oranges in its foliage. Other than that, it's, you know, beautiful leaves, huge rounded leaves. But it's a bit of a beast, it's a bit of a thug. And if you look behind me, you see that it's basically grown way up into the top of this rhododendron Cornish red beside me. And when the leaves are out, it's actually, as you can see, intertwined right through the rhododendron. And when the leaves are out, it's actually killing off and stunting the growth of the rhododendron. So February is a very good time to be looking at, looking at it and pruning it back and making it more size so that you, it can grow away again next year because it's the new growth that produces the biggest leaves and has the nicest autumn colour. We really don't want it killing off this rhododendron. We'd much rather it draped over the wall here as it is, but probably not into the Forsyth here. So we need to just trim it off a little bit here. And as you see, the tendrils are very firmly attached to anything it clings onto. So the poor old Forsyth here has had a bit of a struggle to escape the clutches. And again, when the leaves were out on this Forsyth here, it would have been actually swamping it and killing it off. So we're doing the Forsyth here a favor but it's slightly slow going because you've got to cut off each one of these tendrils. You can't just pull off the, well, you can try, but you, as you see there, I actually broke a piece of Forsyth here, uh, which I didn't intend to. When we turn our attention more to the um, problem with the rhododendron, if we just come down here into the, uh, into the base of the plant, so if we look at the base of this Vitis coinetiae, you can see where it's been cut down quite frequently, maybe not every year, but every three or four years to stop the encroachment on other plants that we've seen. And you can see how vigorously it, it reshoots from the old stems and from the base. And it's got rather, really rather attractive bark when it's got a woody stem. But equally obvious down here is that it's maybe only one or two of its long extended um, limbs, if you like, that's actually doing the, the harm to the rhododendron. And when we look upwards, we see that actually just removing this one, one new shoot has actually probably killed off most of the um, vitis that was actually encroaching into the rhododendron. And I don't think it's going to be possible without destroying the rhododendron to pull out every single piece of this, um, but obviously it will now die off and rot away and we'll have to hope that we don't get a similar problem arising again in the future. Um, I'm just looking up to check that I haven't missed any bits that are going up into the rhododendron. Now there are one or two more high up, but they're not very big bits compared to the one we've just cut off. Now I suppose we could cut, be rather more ruthless and cut it a whole lot down right to ground level. But actually I think we've probably done enough to get rid of it where we didn't want it and to leave it to thrive growing up over the wall where we do want it.